So to continue in the you know, nature-based or what we might have around the house theme, we're going to start with some rock painting, which um, if you have ever searched rock painting online and seen some of the things that people are able to do with painted typically round stones, it's amazing. Um, this could definitely be, you know, cute, crafty for younger kids, right up to amazing fine art on a found rock um, or made rocks. I didn't even know that was a thing. Anyway, I sort of jumped down that rabbit hole and started looking at painted rocks and I thought some of them were spectacular and way out of the realm of what I'm going to cover. Way out of it. Uh, but if this is something that you enjoy, I think you should look at other things that you can do with rocks. And I have one site on there under um, third-party tutorials that you could take a look at, but there's lots of really beautiful examples out there. So what I'm doing is like the basics. Um, fun, go out and look for rocks, right? The rocks you find outside are probably not going to be the beautiful round stones that you need for some of the more smooth, elaborate painted rocks. Like it is hard to paint beautiful details on jagged rocks. That being said, if it has a flat surface, you could paint an image on it. It doesn't have to be a specific painting that covers the entire rock. It also could be words on it. I've realized once I'm done this, um, I am going to find some additional rocks. I started a little garden because I'm home, you know, for weeks, who knows. Um, so obviously I started planting food and to be honest, I very quickly forget what's in what container. <laughs> so I'll make little rocks and I'll put the word, you know, of whatever's growing in there, kale. And then that way it'll stay in the little container and I'll know what I have. But today I'm working on this. It's really simple. Uh, it is a ladybug. Now I was lucky to find this rock and a little leaf for the ladybug, which is still kind of wet, um, but a little, you know, home would be so cute. And I want to tell you that just painting this red, right, is sufficient if you have a black Sharpie because painting these really skinny lines, like the skinny line that's going to go down the back in black, Painting across here a clean line in black would be hard to do. The dots aren't really hard because you can use your finger. That's how I got the two white dots on here. And when that's dry, I'm going to go back in with the Sharpie to put the pupils in. But the rest of it's pretty tricky. So I would say, especially if you're a younger, younger student, just paint it red and then use Sharpie on it for the black. Same thing with a bumblebee. You could paint it yellow. You could paint a little area white for the wings or even just tap on for the wings and then the rest of it could just be the black sharpie line. I am going to put a black sharpie line detail on the leaf as well so I'll come right back when this is dry and when that is complete. Okay so I'm back. I have finished the ladybug and put a coat of Mod Podge on it. That looks like this, um, where's the front, Mod Podge, uh, gloss. And if you have Mod Podge in the house, then that's fantastic. Uh, it would be great to Mod Podge your stone or rock before you paint as well, because it sort of seals it, but if you don't have it, it's no big deal. The only reason I used it as a top coat was because this paint was coming up very shiny and this paint was not, so I wanted them to look like a set and then put a little line detail on this with a little texture. My son helped me do that. And, and then these look like this and they kind of go together like that. Oh, it's really cute. Okay, so for starters, uh, when you're collecting your rocks, take a look at the rocks and see if you see something that they could become. Um, they might look like a ladybug. They might look like a leaf. 
but they might look like a frog or a bunny or um, I don't know, a dragonfly or whatever they could be, right? And then uh, you want to kind of clean them, dry them. If you can seal them with the Mod Podge, great, or some other sealer. And if you can't, it's no big deal. If you can use acrylic paint, then that's fantastic because then um, they could be outside and they can get wet and the acrylic will, you know, stay put. If it's tempera or watercolor that you're using, the rain will wash that off. So maybe that's part of its beauty is that it's temporarily painted and it lives outside and in the rain, the rain washes it away and it goes back to being a stone. Um, or maybe you want to keep those inside if you want to protect them. If the issue is uh, that you don't have any sealer right now and you only have something like tempera paint, um, I would go ahead and make them and then maybe when uh, you can get out and the stores open up, there might be a spray sealer that you can use on tempera. I would caution that as it gets wet, it will run. Uh, so acrylic would be better if you have it. You can go straight to Sharpie. You can skip painting altogether. So Sharpie's obviously permanent. You could just draw right on the rocks, maybe write little positive messages, um, write small beautiful quotes, or maybe just beautiful words. You could leave them around the neighborhood, um, maybe as just little inspirational findings for people, uh, little acts of kindness that would be very lovely. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can do with these rocks and I'll post some more ideas later. Thank you.